Hey everyone, Dana here. Hey, a while back I did a couple of videos on our touch block and although I talked about how to use the touch block, I don't think I really ever talked about or touched on why we use it and when we should use it, you know, specifically. So what I'd like to do in this video is I'd like to give you some examples of when to use X, when to use X and Y, when to use X, Y, and Z, when to use just Z. I really want to uh, go into that and give you some examples. So first off, your Z should be done every time you change a bit, every time, in order to give you the top of your work surface. And your machine knows exactly where it was with the other bit so when you put a new bit in obviously you need to reset your Z in the beginning of a carve if you set your job up off the center of whatever it is you're carving and your origin is off the center you cannot use your touch block for the X and Y you can only use your touch block for the Z you will have to manually put your bit at your zero point at your center of your project if you're doing something square rectangle or even round you can find the center of that and you can bring your mill over manually you can go in and set your X and set your Y if you have a square project and or rectangular project and it has a corner if you set up your origin from the one of those corner points that is where you put your touch block to do your X and Y now you can also do your X Y and Z if you use a touch block like this one here which is the auto touch block you can use any bit in this and if you're just doing the Z you use this part here okay but when you do your X and Y and Z from that point, you would go ahead and start your carve. Now, if there's a bit change in there, what you need to remember is, is that your bit is different now. You're not going to get that in there the same length unless you use collars. Now, there's, there's a way to put a collar on your bits so that they all have the same amount going in and they would... Basically, your bit would just butt up against your collet on your router and it would give you the same height. That way you don't have to set your Z again. Um, the other reason you wouldn't want to use your X and Y again is if the project hasn't moved, after you carve, if you need to carve again because you're changing bits, there's no need to set your X and Y again as long as your project piece has not moved. You can just go with the same X and Y. The other thing is is make sure that you don't home your machine and make sure that you don't um, shut it off because you will lose that point. Now there are ways in G-Sender that you can save your X, Y and Z points or specifically I would use them for your X and Y I won't go into that now that's a whole nother video but um, that way you can just go back to that when you open G Center again start your machine it will rem G Center will remember those points after you've homed your machine you must home your machine before that if you don't use the limit switches then you really can't home the machine so unless the machine knows where it's at and how it knows where it's at is by homing it and it tells it right where it's at and then it picks that coordinate that you've saved and it can go right there and it would be accurate changing your X changing your Y we've gone through that now your Z has to be done each time unless of course you have a collet like I said a touch probe very very accurate very accurate and it will get you results the same every time uh, you could use the sheet of paper method and uh, 
bring your Z down, your bit down to your material, use a piece of paper until you can't move it anymore and then set your Z there. That'll get you pretty close. I mean, real close actually in some cases, but um, touch block definitely is the way to go. I can't think of any other reason uh, why you wouldn't use a touch block, but I think I've touched on the X, the Y, and the Z. It all depends on how you create uh, your project and when you pick your origin point. I like to go off the center. I specifically like to go bigger in material sometimes when I do relief carves because you're going to need to, if you change bits, you're going to need to re-Z. And once you've done a clearance, it may have re removed all your initial. So if you make your relief the same size as the piece of wood, you're going to lose your Z height if you carve everything away with your clearance path or with your roughing path. So I like to go bigger so that I can bring the mill over, do my Z on the existing. That's one case. I do carves where um, I do inlays. I'm doing an inlay series right now and it's a number of bit changes because we do clearance passes. Sometimes we use an eighth uh, and a V bit or an eighth flat end mill, a quarter inch flat end mill and a V bit. So there's three different tools that we're using and we definitely need to re-Z every time. So just some thoughts for you. Sorry I didn't cover it in my previous videos. I'm going to leave a link to those above and I'll put them in the description below so that you can go check them out if you haven't done so. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. Be safe out there.